Hi everybody, this is Bob Brown, and uh, I'm going to go over some statistics that might help um, civic groups, churches, uh, anyone uh, interested in helping uh, the United States become a better country. And this was a survey conducted by the, the Northern Jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite, and I apologize if I'm giving off some information, but uh, I thought it was pretty, I, I really liked uh, the Scottish Rite, this may be a mirror image, they put the path forward. And I'm a Northern Jurisdiction Scottish Rite, and I can do a video on what the Scottish Rite is. And uh, but they have a chart here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm sorry. And I'm going to go through this chart because this chart is very telling. So if you're interested in why society is the way it is, I think you're going to see here pretty shortly. So full disclosure, I'm a Freemason. I'm a Scottish Rite Freemason. I'm a Knights Templar. Um, I'm a member, uh, I, I'm a lifelong Episcopalian, I'm currently attending uh, a Baptist church, uh, wonderful people, and so that's, that's my, my background, my bias, my lens I'm coming to you at. But let's go through this. So the Scottish Rite commissioned this study because they're wondering what's going to happen to Freemasonry in 20 years. But I think this bodes for the Elks, for any service organization, for any church. And I think overall it shows what's going to happen to our country if we don't take some steps to turn things around. So they they went down and they had they did a, a ranking from one to a hundred. So one's one's the top, and a hundred is the bottom. So they took a hundred uh, aspects of life, and they had millennials, Gen Xers. I would, I would include Gen Yers and the Gen X and boomers, baby boomers, I'm a baby boomer and they had them go through this and they started ranking and then the Scottish Rite pulled out of that these one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, six aspects that is important to Freemasonry not totally important, not the only thing, but it was kind of important as a Freemason so they were kind of zeroing in for us, the uh, membership, to give us this chart versus giving us a hundred and we didn't know what we were looking at so let's go down it, and it's pretty telling. So scale top, one is top, hundred is we don't care at all. So for millennials, justice came in at twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. <laughs> now, if you turn that, so one in their scale, one is the top and hundreds the bottom. But if I turn this number around and I go on an ABC scale, hundred points versus zero points. So if we take that twenty-seven. And we put it in my scale, that comes out to being uh, 73. So justice, which is 27 on the Scottish Rite scale, but on an ABC scale, you know, A being you pet, you got a great grade, and F is a 65, you fail. So at 27, they're at 73. So they're at C level. It's a C. Okay, a low C. All right. Integrity. This is for millennials from the Scottish Rite. They were doing this study. 29, one being the top, 100 being I don't care, 29th place was integrity. If you turn that around into an ABC scale, that's now going to be 71, which is a D, D minus. So if we grade that, we say, well, it's a D minus. Toleration, 36. Out on the Scottish rate scale of one, to, one down to 100, toleration was 36. Turn that, put it into my scale, that's 64, you fail. Because 65 is the absolute lowest we can give you. After 65, it's an F and we're done. So they hit 64 there. So that's a failure. This is a very important one now. Reverence for God amongst millennials. Reverence for God. So any churches out there, reverence for God, 52. One is top. 100 is, we don't care, 52. Put it in the Bob scale, that's... 48. That's a complete failure. 65 is a failure on the ABC scale. 48 is you wiped out. You you didn't you you didn't even attend class. Reverence for God 52. 52. Service, community service, a charitable works, charitable gifts. 58. One is the top. 100 is nothing. 58. Turn it around in my scale. Now you're you're what? 42. That's a complete failure. This number, uh, that all shocked me, but this last one, this blew me out of my chair. Devotion to country. Take a guess. 
No, it's not 100, <laughs> but it's pretty close. Devotion to country, 85. One is the top. That's the most important thing in your life. 100, we don't care. 85. Put it on the Bob scale. That's 15 out of 100. Your test was 100, and you scored 15 on it for devotion to country. That's the millennials. Think about that for a minute. I want you to I want you to let that simmer in your mind like it simmered in mine. You know, and I'm not saying I'm the voice of moral authority because I sure as hell am not. But when I look at millennials, I'm like, what have we done? I'm I gotta take blame too. You gotta take blame if you're a baby boomer. I, I don't blame the World War II guys. I don't the guys and gals of World War II. I don't really blame them. I blame I blame us, the boomers. Okay? The boomers. We we have done something uh, terribly wrong. We've done something terribly wrong. Right? Devotion to country, 85 out of 100. 85th. It's low. It's very low. It's 15 on an, on an ABC scale. Let's look at Gen X now. Gen X Justice, 8. That's pretty good. Okay? If we t you know, 1 is the top. So for Gen Xers, Justice is 8. That's pretty good. If you put on an ABC... <laughs> ABC scale, there's so many cats in this house, just, there's always going to be a cat tail on your face. That's a 92, that's a low A. Eh, we'll give you an A. We'll give you an A minus for that, Gen Xers. Integrity, 11. Okay, it's a B, right? It's 89, it's, it's, a, it's a middle of the road B, so it's good. Service was 24. I'd like to see the number higher. That's that's you know that's 76. So that's a C. That's a C. It's low C. C minus. Toleration was 31. That's that's a D. Almost failing. That's 69. On a, if you turn my scale, their scale is one top 100. You know the lowest ranking. So put a 31 in there. My scale that's 69. So it's a it's a D minus. You're going to fail. You're going to fail the class. Reverence for God, <clears throat> a little better, 36, one being the top, 100, I don't care, 36th, most important thing in my life is reverence for God, turn it around on ABC scale, that's, you know, that's 64, that's failing, that's a failing grade. <clears throat> Devotion to country, another shocking number for Gen X, 73. Put on the ABC scale, you know, that's what, uh, it's 27th, 27 points out of 100. It's a big fail, you know. Don't feel proud because 85 is 73. Let's look at boomers. Let's look at us, the boomers, the people who created this mess. Let's look at us. Justice is four. It's pretty good. We got an A. <laughs> if you you know one is the top. So on, on the Scottish Right scale, one is the top. Four, you know. Four is pretty good. If we turn on ABC scale, it's a 96. Yeah, you got a solid A there. Hey, at a boy, at a boy, baby boomers, you got an A. Integrity eight. Eh, it's not bad. Not bad. Like to see that number a little higher, but it's a 92. We'll give you an A minus on that, baby boomers. That's including this guy here. Service is 22. That's kind of bad. I'd like to see that number a little higher. That's that's a C, right? That's kind of a low C. It's a, you know, it's 78. It's a 78 out of 100. To give you an ABC scale, I'm grading it, okay? The Scottish Rite didn't grade it. I'm grading it. I don't speak for the Scottish Rite. I don't speak for any Freemason but myself. But I kind of graded it that way, so that's that's kind of a C-. minus. That kind of stinks. Reverence for God was 27. You see what happens? You see what happens, everybody? You see what happens? You see what happens when you, when you don't give people a spiritual dimension. I'll talk more about reverence for God, what it really means. So that's a 27. That's the 27th most important thing on the Scottish Rite Scale, 1 down to 100. So to turn it around, so you've got a 73. So you got a, you got a C minus, baby boomers. We got a C minus. So we had a C minus. We were, we, we were, you know, we were cut in class. We didn't go to church. And look what happened. The Gen Xers got 31 on reverence for God. And the reverence for God for millennials just tanked at 52. Toleration, 33. Bad number. 
We've got to be more tolerant of people, understanding people's differences. And tolerance just it doesn't just mean religion, race. It, it, you know, it also means differences of people who have autism, who have mental illness, who have uh, you know physical uh, problems, who are in wheelchairs. It's you know we have to see other people as human beings, not as part of a group. You know, there that each person is a unique human being with a unique set of talents and difficulties and problems of their life. So that toleration is low. That's going to be on the, my scale, 33. It would be a 67. So it's a D D. It's a D minus minus, and you're getting your paper all written. You know the and the, and the teacher or professor is writing your paper up with red ink, really angry because they're grading your paper at 2 in the morning and they, and, and they hate you because what you did to them. Here's another low number, devotion to country for baby boomers is 50. That's a fail. It's an easy one. <laughs> one out of 100, it's 50. And devotion to country is below 65. It's a fail. So in devotion to country, millennials, 85. It's the 85th out of 100 things important to them. For Gen X, 73, it's 73rd most important thing out of 100 important for them. Devotion country is 50. So you got a you got an F for devotion country for millennials. You got an F for Gen Xers. You got an F for boomers. Way to go. We're looking good. See, this is why people pick us apart because these numbers, they they the, the our our enemies both foreign and domestic. Whatever part of the spectrum you're on, we're all Americans. And believe me, we have enemies. It doesn't matter if you're left or right or center. There are enemies against the United States. When they, they intrinsically know these numbers, see, they know them. Your enemies, Kim Jong-un and all them, those, baby, those cats know these numbers. They can sense it in their subconscious. Let's talk about reverence for God. Okay, let me talk to you about reverence for God and why... This number is really, these reverence for God and devotion to country shock me and why we all should be shocked at that. Reverence for God ultimately to me means respecting yourself. It's reverence for your own spiritual dimension of your life, to have a spiritual component to your life. If you have no reverence for God, if you're, if, if, if 52, uh, if, you know, as a Christian, and, and believe me, I'm the biggest hypocrite on the planet. I'll, I'll tell you that flat out. But we should strive. <laughs> we should strive for God to be number one. Okay? At least in the top ten. Right? At least in the top five. At least in the top ten. But across the board, God is not in the top five. Uh, for all our generations that are currently... It, running America in the communities, running businesses, being in the military, being in politics, um, servicing people. I'm not saying everyone's bad. Let's get that out of our head. That's more propaganda of enemies, both foreign and domestic, against all spectrums of Americans. But that number, to me, reverence, when you have no reverence for God, you ultimately have no reverence for your own spiritual dimension. However you define that's up to you. Whether you're Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, uh, Jainism, however, Zen Buddhism, you know, uh, Native American religion, however you, however you define your spiritual dimension. But when you say that reverence for God is at 52, which on my scale is a, is a failing grade, well, what do you expect? Is what do you? How do you expect the world to be? Because people don't respect themselves, they don't respect their own spiritual dimension, they don't build a spiritual life within themselves, they just see themselves, I guess, as a vessel of clay, and that I'm just here for the time being, and then this vessel of clay will be shattered, and then I will, it'll be as though I never existed. You know, it's this nihilism, it's this, it's, it's like, I almost want to call it an uninformed atheism. It's an uninformed atheism that's nihilistic at, at its core, and it doesn't even have any humanistic qualities to it. It's just like, well, it's dog eat dog, it's evolution, it's, you know, whoever gets the best, and it's just these, these you know, these, it's from the uh, Arnold poem, you know, of Dover Beach, of these ignorant armies that clash at night. That's, that's all it is. So that's what's happened. That's the core of what of our problems are. Because we haven't given people, we have not allowed people, we have not given people permission to have a spiritual dimension. We have not given people that it's you know it's it's you know I think people said it's too dangerous for people to have an open mind and hope an open spiritual uh, 
insight into themselves. And the religions are basically tools that humanity has created that has helped people gain spiritual insight into their own particular unique nature. So that's a very troublesome number, and it's one of the reasons that we have a spiritual decay, which leads to a moral decay, decay that leads to an ethical de decay, that ultimately leads to a legal decay, that leads to law and no law and total disorder. So these numbers are scary, and we have to do something to turn around. Now, the, <coughs> again, and I apologize, I'm not speaking for the Scottish Rite, I'm not speaking for Freemasonry, I'm not speaking for any Grand Lodge, I'm speaking just as one person who's a Freemason, who's a Christian, who's a Templar, who tries to get along with other people the best he can, who's a flawed human being, who's the biggest hypocrite in the world, that has more sins than all of you people put together. I, I, I fully, I'm guilty on all charges. I might as well, I mean, why lie about it? <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the person that knows already knows this, so who am I kidding? The only person I'm kidding is myself. So anyway, that those numbers shocked me. That's why I made this video. Devotion to country was 85th. 185th. I mean, that's a shocking, that's shocking. Sorry, I'm not good at these cameras. I have trifocals, so I can't really face you properly. I, I apologize. But that number is really, really shocking. You know, and you can tell, like when I walk around in the neighborhood I live in, I you hardly see any American flags out anymore. I have an American flag out. And I, I'm not virtue signaling. I'm I've just I believe that and, and I didn't serve in the military, my father did. But I think you should have, you know, devotion to your country. You should be devoted to the principles of freedom and self determination that the United States has. I don't care what your spectrum is, I don't care what your party is. The the question is we have as Americans we, we enjoy we are people that maybe just be a blip in time that enjoy somewhat free the ability to have a free will and self-determination in life and we can never lose sight of that because once it's gone once the United States experiment is gone it won't be coming back anytime soon especially with the technology they have now Millennials see devotion to the country is very unimportant so do Gen Xers baby boomers are 50 we probably cost it we need to understand that. Reverence for God. I guess one good point is that millennials, Gen Xers, and baby boomers see God as more important than country. I guess there's a little hope in that. But I, I would say that we have to help the millennials, the baby boomers, I'm, I'm talking to all of them, we have to help them. These we got to get these grades up, okay? We got to get some tutoring classes for ourselves first of all, but we've got to get this these these numbers up. Justice is paramount. There has to be equal protection under law. We're seeing all this stuff played out from us now. Justice has to be paramount. We all have to be treated equally, regardless under the law. Okay, integrity has got to be a higher number. I mean, for the boomers, I'll say at least it's an eight. So integrity is important. But for millennials, somehow that number slipped to 29. Toleration, 36. We have to have more tolerance. Again, tolerance isn't running around calling people names. and, and It's basically understanding that everybody you look at is a human being, just like you. They're going to live. They're going to die. They're going to have pain. They're going to suffer. And they have hopes, dreams, and, and just like you do. That's respect. Because ultimately, when you don't respect human beings, or you... Uh, you you dehumanize people into different groups you're ultimately dehumanizing yourself and you see that with the radical rhetoric of people who don't like this group and it happens on both sides it happens on both sides and it's the dehumanization that these 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 uh, erratic illogical shills that come, come in any society any group any religion any in-group preference these erratic these are logical radical shills that say we are the best and everyone else is wrong obviously that's insane insanity you know, everybody's a human being. You know, you know your blood. I, I donate Red Cross blood all the time. It can go to anybody: Muslim, Sikh, Christian, Jew. You know, you know that's that's what what it means to be an American. Looking after each other, even though we know that we have differences and we know we have differences of opinion. But anyway, I thought these numbers were shocking, and it shows what's going on. You know, when we don't ha when we have no devotion to our country. Well, we're going to have law. We're not going to have law. We're going to have disorder. 
when people don't see service to others as important, like it's 58 on the Scottish Rite scale, on my scale it's 42, which is below 65, which is failing. When you don't have service, I mean, and you don't recognize that you yourself will be in that position. We all say, but for the grace of God, there go I. But eventually, there go I, you shall be. You will be the person that you used to say, if but for the grace of God, there go I. We will all be in that position. It's inevitable. It's an inevitable course of time and mortality. Reverence for God, again, 52, that's, you know, that's 48 on the ABC scale, that's failing. When you have no reverence for God, you have no spiritual dimension. When you have no spiritual dimension, and we don't allow people to build a spiritual dimension within this vessel of clay, the human form, what do we expect? How do we expect the outcome to be anything other than what it is? As a matter of fact, look at these numbers. We're kind of lucky, you know. Maybe there is an all-seeing providence that is looking over us. It was Bismarck that remarked that, and I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but Otto van Bismarck of Germany in the 19th century remarked that God, I think God has a special providence for fools, drunkards, and the United States. And that's kind of us. I think Bismarck knew us better than we than we think. Kind of like Churchill in England. They they kind of knew us better than we know ourselves. So these are numbers that are important. So I would recommend to explain people the importance of justice, the importance of being an, uh, of integrity, the importance of have toleration. Toleration, like I said, it's not just about racial or religion or creeds or colors. It's also toleration of people who have different ideas, even in business, that they may have a different perspective and that perspective should be listened to. It doesn't have to be acted on, but you might want to listen to it because these different angles of perception, as I like to call it, people are giving you different angles of perception. You need to think about that in a business context or managerial context or military context or uh, medical context or you know whatever situation you're in. Sometimes you know it's that small, still voice. It's the person you you know it's you know it's you know you know out of the mouth of babes. Sometimes it's the person you least ex expect will give you the answer. And when you don't have toleration, you're never going to hear these soft voices. When you don't have toleration, you will never hear the soft voice. You will never hear the inner voice, the soft, still voice around you that's trying to give you the information. Reverence for God, you know, that again, no spiritual dimension. You, you, if you don't have a spiritual dimension, you, don't have, you won't have spiritual capabilities. You won't have spiritual insight. You won't have the ability to see beyond time and space. You're going to be totally trapped in this dimension. You know, and sometimes you have to have that extra sensory perception, that extra sense of spiritual dimension, to to see beyond the confines and the prison of time, to see that there could be a different reality, and you could see people in a different way, that they're not just you, not a dehumanized group that you don't like. You know, service again. Everyone's going to need help. Every human being will need help. The very the very nature of humanity means that all of us will need someone else to care for us and help us at some time. It is an inevitability of time, space, and mortality. You will not escape it. I will not escape it. There is no way to escape it. We must see the suffering of others is the inevitable journey that we will take also. And devotion to country. I mean, we are gifted in the United States to have, and this is not a perfect country, and it's less perfect all the time. But we, are, we have been gifted with the power of, of having freedom and self-determination, that we can have the religion we want, we can have the thoughts we want, we can dress the way we want, we can, we can fall in love with whoever we want, we can, you know, we can shape our destiny with our own thoughts, imagination, and creativity, to create the world life that we want, as long as we stay within the moral legal bounds of the, that we all agree upon. When we have no devotion to country, we ultimately say we have no devotion to each other. We have no devotion to each other. We, we don't care about each other. And when you put all this up, the enemies with, within the own, our own psyche, the, the enemies, both, you know, there's enemies both foreign and domestic, but that also applies to the human psyche. You know, there's enemies both foreign to us, and there's also the domestic enemies in the mind. Our own, our own addictions, our own, our own petty biases, our own 
our own hatreds, our own self-loathing, our own mis uh, misinterpretation, our own ignorance, our own willful ignorance, our own willfully turning away when people are in trouble and we, we don't speak out. We've seen many cases of that now. This is a very troublesome number. And we, as boomers or anyone, we should look at these and work on this. Am, am I a just person? Am I, do I have an integrity? Where do I score myself? Score, take, you know, I'll have to do another video on what they did, what they took from, but just score yourself. How, how are you with justice towards people you work with or customers? Do you mistreat customers? Do you cheat customers? Do you treat everyone with a just nature? How about integrity with your customers? I'm just talking from a business perspective. Do you cheat your customers? Do you treat them with dignity and respect like you'd want to be treated when you're in that role? Because remember, the marketplace is where we work out our differences to find goods and services. And we each, sometimes we're customers, and other times we're the provider. And so we each interchange in this role, this, this, this morality play of capitalism that gives us the goods and services we have. Where do I score in reference for God? I know where I score, not very high. I need to do a lot better job. Toleration to others. I have a lot. I, I need to work on that. I need to work on my toleration. Like I said, it's not just about race, religion, and creed. You need to do that all the time. But differences of ideas, perspectives, um, you know, different philosophies, different angles of perceptions, different cultural experiences. How do we view those? Do we view them with suspicion. Do we view them with in that they may have a unique. Uh, peculiar angle of, a, uh, of enclavity into reality that we do not have and gives us an insight and gives us answers we never saw before. And devotion to country. When we don't have devotion to country, we don't have any devotion to each other as Americans, as free people, as the democratically loving free people, both here, France, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand, you know, uh, Poland, you know, wherever. You know, when we don't have devotion to the democratic principles, that transcends not just our, our, our relationship to each other, it transcends ourselves, transcends the people that we, uh, uh, to Canada, to Mexico, to, uh, you know, to Great Britain, etc. We, we, we say that's not important. Democracy and freedom are not important. These are dangerous, dangerous, this is a dangerous, dangerous uh, trend that has to be changed. So I hope you found this of interest. Uh, this has been Bob Brown. I'd be interested in your thoughts on this. And as, all, as I always tell people, keep studying, keep learning, because the only answer ultimately is, is to have an educated mind, a mind that is steeped in, this, in the great wisdom of that humanity has provided for us through the countless ages, and to learn as much as we can th through science, through literature, through religion, and always through the lens of compassion.